Oh, this is where it starts getting real fun. We've got all the tools, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready to rock and roll. We can start really doing the applications of derivatives now. So today we're going to talk about related rates of change. And in class, we're going to take a few days on this, a couple few. All right, I'm going to write a problem, and I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through it. Okay, so first things first. Um, uh, the rings, the rings on a um, lake caused by a rock expand and then let's go let's call this circular right circle they expand um, at a rate of do, these things are really moving let's go two feet per second Okay, so you can visualize this. Everybody's throwing a rock into a pond and watch the concentric circles come out from that. Okay, <clears throat> so let's say they're expanding at two feet a second. So that's a big rock. It's pushing pretty quick. Um, how fast, how fast is the area of the circles, of the circles changing when the uh, radius is, um, let's say, 10 feet, okay? This is a really typical kind of standard issue related rates of change problem. So think about it. Kind of close your eyes. What's going on here? What we've got is we chuck a rock into a lake. We've got circles expanding outward, okay? Now, here's the trick. Here's what's probably most important. Think of this as though a snapshot is being taken. And that snapshot is being taken when the radius of the circles. So think about what's happening here. you got circles that are doing this, badly drawn circles at that, that are expanding outward, et cetera, et cetera. And what we're doing is we're taking a picture at the point when the radius, oops, when the radius is 10 feet. Now, at that point in time, lots of things are changing. The circumference of the circle is changing, the area of the circle is changing, and the radius is changing. We know that it changes at a constant rate of two feet per second. Okay? So the first thing that you have to be able to visualize with these, and that's best done with the picture, is what's changing, okay, and what's constant. Now, you ready? Here's the approach that we're going to do. The first step is draw a picture if possible. It's not always possible, but it's usually possible. Okay, draw a pic if possible. And we got our little picture. Oops, I don't know where the O came from. That's crazy. We got our little picture going on over here. We're going to do a few of these examples. All right, quite a few of them. Sorry that you have to watch me write them out. If picture, really, Ripley, slow it down. Draw a picture if, so we're just going to say pick if pos. <laughs> okay? Now, part two is ask yourself, What's changing? What's changing? What isn't? Changing. Oh, my pen's giving me fits today. What isn't? All right. Well, in this case, pretty much everything is changing. Okay. So part three is what rate of change are you looking for? What rate of change are you looking for? So let's look close. Looking for. Now this is going to be the most important question that you ask yourself in these problems, and I'll show you why in just a second. How fast is the area of the circles changing? All right, so we are looking for an instantaneous rate of change of the area. Now, okay, why is that important? Now think about that. When I first threw the rock in and this, this circle was first formed, now it's moving at two feet a second, but the area of that circle isn't changing as quickly as when it's 10 feet out, right? Because if this, this thing's moving at a constant two feet per second, then the area of the circle is changing much more quickly when I'm talking about changes in big circles. Now, we're going to label what we're looking for, and this is really important, and I'll show you why here in just a sec. Do you agree that this is a mathematical representation of the rate of change that I'm looking for? I'm looking for dA over dt. 
Now, why is that important? Well, it has to do with step four. Write an equation that contains part three. Now, what I mean is, if I need a dA over dt, I'm going to start with an A and eventually take its derivative. All right, so A is area. Area of what? A circle. Well, that's easy enough. This is going to be pi r squared. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. This is where you can, it's, related rates of change can be so easy and they can be so hard. But the trick is, is to look at this formula. This is a function, really, if I wanted to, I could write this as area as a function of r, couldn't I? Right? That's not a b. All right, my bar is terribly. <clears throat> All right. So if I just say, okay, well, I'm going to take the derivative of this. That's easy. Well, this is a primed of r equals 2 pi r. Strangely enough, also the circumference of the circle. I'm starting to see some patterns here. There's a problem. This guy right here is dA, whoops, dA over dr. And I need a dA over dt. This is the rate of change of the area as a function of r, not as a function of time. Well, how the heck are we going to come up with a dA over dt then? That's easy. The easiest part is I'm going to use implicit differentiation to differentiate this guy right here. That's kind of cool, huh? Okay, now. I'm going to put one last rule. There's really only five rules with these. They're real simple. And, but I'm going to take a derivative first. All right, let's look close. So let's see. D the derivative of a is 1, but i got to leave a footnote, right, because I'm differentiating with respect to t and not with respect to a or with respect to r. So this becomes dA over dt, which sweet, that's what I'm trying to solve for, equals 2 pi r dr over dt. This footnote comes from, I took the derivative of r squared as though it was a t squared. So I have to leave that little footnote. Okay? Now, <clears throat> excuse me. We're trying to solve for this guy. So in order for me to be able to solve for this guy, well, I need two pi is a constant. That's easy. I need r. Hey, wait. That's r right there. And I need dr over dt. Hey, that's dr over dt right there. That's a rate of change of the radius. So this one's a really simple one to solve for. Check it out. I'm just going to go 2 pi. The radius is 10. And dr over dt is, you know what, though? I am going to, I just launch the pen. I am going to include units on this, because I want to make sure that I'm getting area as a function of time. Let's make sure the units play out. Uh, let's see, this is 10 feet times dr over dt, which is 2 feet per second. Like I said, this thing's really moving. And look at what I get. Feet times feet is feet squared, right? So that's that 40 pi square feet per second. Hey, that's an instantaneous rate of change of area. Now let me show you something that students just love to do, and this makes me nuts. I have to end up pulling all the hair out of my head, and I don't have a whole lot left. So look. Students are going to see this 10 feet right here, this radius, and they're going to want to plug it in. The problem is, is that that 10 feet is changing. It's not a constant. So I'm going to write this one in green just because it makes me sick when I see the error. Don't plug in any values. Plug in any values if that value is changing. All right? And think of this as at the time of the snapshot. In other words, when we took that picture, snapshot, when we took that picture, what was changing? Well, in this case, everything was changing. The area was changing. The radius was changing. Now, let's do, I'm going to change back. The green is just the most obnoxious ever. Uh, uh, let's do another one. 